Who were the ancient people of the world? And what did they know? How can we interpret the symbols the ancients left us, appearing majestically on the temple walls? Has our science been able to explain how their structures were built? Or is it still a puzzle that has yet to be decoded? The Bible would have us believe that we are merely 6,000 years old. Yet geological, archaeological, anthropological, linguistic and climatological evidence around the world tells a very different story. Could it be that the civilization of ancient Egypt is much, much older than 5,000 years, as traditional Egyptology tells us? Egyptians themselves, in at least one stone tablet and one papyrus, tell the story that ancient e Egypt is much, much older than the Egyptologists think it is. To me as a geologist, it's unquestionable that the chronology has to be redone. I think that all ancient cultures were very interested in the cycles of time and astronomy and how uh, human beings are embedded in these cycles. So there's certain things in common that they all seem to know, and we don't know it. And I think our science now, right now is just beginning to relearn it. We find megalithic sites everywhere around the world. Overwhelmingly, these places, the pyramids, the Stonehenges, were placed on ground where an unusual type of geology naturally concentrates the regular daily electromagnetic fluctuations that occur everywhere on the Earth each day. Traditional Egyptology repeatedly tells a story that the pyramids were built around 2500 BC as tombs for pharaohs, yet no mummies have ever been found in any pyramid in Egypt. Could it be that the pyramids were not tombs? And if not, what function did they have? All of those concepts about it being a, a tomb are, are nonsense. In fact, I don't even think there's good evidence that it ever was a tomb for any pharaoh whatsoever. Of all of the wild theories floating around the pyramids, the actual wildest is the one that's accepted without question by all Egyptologists, which is that the pyramids served as tombs. Of all of the theories for which there's zero evidence, that one has zero squared evidence. We don't find mummies in the pyramids. A lot of experiments have been done that show that there's a certain type of energy that does not exist in our current science. The ancients knew a lot more about it than we do, and they used it in their machines, their devices, their engineering. Then the megalith builders designed these structures and, and then built them in such a way as to further concentrate those energies. So they definitely seem to have known what they were doing. Strange things happen sometimes in sacred sites, and those are clues that the physics that we're taught in school is not everything, that there's something else that can go on. The core of the pyramids, at least at Giza, are made out of one type of limestone. That kind of limestone conducts electricity pretty well. And then they chose to sheath the pyramid in the uh, wider uh, Tura limestone, which has almost zero um, uh, magnesium content. They were built exactly like, you know, an, if you will, an insulated wire. Why the granite in the passageways? The granite is slightly radioactive, and it will ionize or electrify the air. The Great Pyramid was basically a, a device, a generator for, if you will, broadcasting and transmitting throughout the planetary structure a type of field which uplifted the entire humanity. They were intended actually to somehow or another spiritualize a whole civilization. In other words, to provide a widespread high level of energy that people needed because a descending age was upon them. Many traditions around the world recognize this large cycle of time. They think of it as a great period of, of collective human spiritual gestation. The myth of progress, also known as the Darwinian delusion, states that humanity has been steadily evolving, leading us to believe that today we are the most technologically advanced we've ever been. Yet evidence from megalithic sites demonstrate sophisticated knowledge of high-level technology, subtle earth energy, and astronomy marking extended cycles of time. 
Could it be that the ancients were actually more advanced than we are today? And it's somewhat counterintuitive to what we've learned in our own Western education that it's referred to as the myth of progress, that human beings today are in all ways superior to human beings that came before. It's simply not true. What we refer to as history that began some 6,000 years ago is really the advent of a, a different style of social organization that's typified by the dominator mode, hierarchies of dominance, you know, warring deities, warring mythologies, and control systems. It eventually declined, and then when that happened, the whole idea of the schools of mystery and the ancient knowledges and preserving those traditions that had come down from those fabulous ages, that was lost. And then eventually it was ridiculed and then finally it had to go underground because people would, would either actively burn those texts or you know, persecute the people who, who had that belief system. And I think at that point, we were in the dark ages. Hakim Awian is an indigenous wisdom keeper who has spent his life at the foot of the Sphinx in the shadow of the pyramids. A trained archaeologist of 53 years, Hakim has made a bridge between ancient knowledge passed down from generation to generation and fieldwork around the pyramids. What we have of ruins here, it's the latest walls built up on the ground level. So how about the lower level? You can see it with your naked eye. In the museum, uh, you have uh, statues, uh, you notice that the woman put the arm around the man's shoulder. And uh, that shows, are they equal? No. Woman was the upper head in the family. Granite is a transmission stone. Don't compare people of today uh, like the people of the ancient days. The people of ancient days were healthy. They able to use the senses. The power we get from the pyramid is to use, energize our glands and, and, and organs. And... The Pyramid Code explores the gap between modern science and ancient science. Through interviews with recognized scientists exploring new theories about the sophisticated technology of the ancient Egyptians and its place in the distant past. You come to tend to the conclusions, if more data comes in that seems to indicate something else, I don't ever want to be afraid to um, change my conclusions. It's not fair also. It's not fair to deny what you can see and touch by your own hand. It's like uh, great art or great um, spiritual insight, expansion of consciousness. In a way, there's nothing more important than that. Um, and I think that was one of the primary functions of um, structures like the Great Pyramid. It's good for healthy life, to keep life healthy. Perhaps our science is ready to rediscover the secrets of the ancients. Perhaps we can now crack the Pyramid Code.